Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another session of Engineering Graphics with me Yash Chawla from Parul Institute of Engineering and Technology. Well, today I have a long beard. Well, let's see if this works out. So, last since last uh, we discussed engineering curves and we finished up with conics that was construction of ellipse, construction of parabola and construction of hyperbola. Today we are going to move on to more engineering curves which are cycloidal curves, involutes, spirals and at the end of the session we will discuss some common examples if time permits us. First the cycloidal curves. There are three types of cycloidal curves. One is a simple cycloid, the other one is a hypocycloid and the third one is uh, sorry second one is epicycloid and third one is a hypocycloid. Now the only difference between all these three is that the directing line or the, the changes the directing it becomes a directing line or it becomes a directing curve accordingly all these three can be distinguished let's take a look at some figures to figure out the difference between all these three first is a cycloid as you can see in the dotted line this is a curve or say this is a circle which is depicted as a rolling circle this circle rotates about this center point and also moves linearly. Now this line is the, known as the directing line. This is the line on which this circle rotates. Just You can just imagine a wheel of a cycle or a wheel of a automo uh, autom automobile which is moving on the road where this uh, circle is depicted by the wheel of the car and or the wheel of the bicycle and this straight line can be uh, can be judged as a road so if we take a point on this curve or this say the circle the wheel or uh, the automotive wheel then we take a point on this curve and as this circle moves ahead on this directing line it traces a path a locus so the locus of the point P which is there on this circle moving on the directing line is known as a cycloid as you can see in this green curve this green curve is known as a cycloid let's move to epicycloid see I told you the only difference is that the type of curve on which the circle is going to rotate will change there in cycloid it was a straight line here I have a circle a rolling circle is rolling over a directing circle let's see this particular circle is the rolling circle as it was in the previous point also and this is the point on the circle for which the locus has to be plotted now what path is it going to follow now this rolling circle is uh, rolling over this circle which is the bigger circle known as the directing circle so as this circle mo uh, revolves or say rolls on this circle it traces this red path this point P on the circle traces this red path so this red path is known as an epicycloid let's move to hypocycloid the difference between epicycloid and hypocycloid is quite uh, it's quite eminent by these two figures I'll take you back to the figure of epicycloid ones this is an epicycloid and this is an hypocycloid so what difference do you find I'll compare both the figures one by one in epicycloid this is the rolling circle and this is the directing circle whereas in hypocycloid what happens is that this rolling circle instead of being on the outer edge of the directing circle it is there on the inner edge of the directing circle the rest of the things remain the same there is a point on the circle and as this circle uh, rolls inside this curve that is the directing circle it traces this red path inside it which is known as an hypocycloid so we are going to learn first of all in this first session first part that how to plot all these three curves so let's first come to the cycloid now there are three type of cycloids basically in each and every uh, in each and every uh, cycloid that we are going to discuss there are three types of slides uh, three type of cycloids one is a simple second is the inferior and third is the 
superior now these same things apply to epicycloid as well as hypocycloid so once we discuss simple examples of uh, simple cycloid inferior cycloid and supercycloid the same methods have to be applied to epicycloid as well as hypocycloid let's move so we already have discussed this definition for a simple cycloid the point is on the rolling circle as we saw in the first figure the example of a tire rolling on a road is an example of a simple cycloid uh, if a point is there on the tire it will trace a simple cycloid so let's see a animation to make you understand more i'll take it back and then roll it over again i'll do it again so as you can see that this circle rotate started its rotation from here and then here it completed its first rotation here it completed its uh, second rotation and here uh, it completed it, its half rotation so this initial point of the first uh, rolling and the end point of the first roll is will be the distance pi into d or 2 pi r which is the length of the circumference of this rolling circle say if the diameter is d then this distance from the initial point up to the end point would be pi d and if we say the radius is r then this length from initial point to final point would be 2 pi r we'll see the animation once again then we'll move ahead just pictureize and visualize the concept of this point on the circle rolling circle moving on a directing line which is a straight line so what conditions are we going to under what conditions are we going to build or uh, construct this cycloid so let's see diameter of the rolling circle uh, or say the generating circle is d so d is the diameter so we have to construct a cycloid and then what it says is that we have to draw a tangent and normal to any point on the curve so we have two informations that is given to us that the diameter of the rolling or the generating circle is d the second point that it is given is that we have to draw a cycloid so the picture should come clear that a straight line has to be drawn on which there will be a circle of diameter d which will be uh, rolling on it and then at last when we have once plotted the cycloid then we are going to draw the tangent and the normal at any point on the curve a condition for the initial point is also given in the question it says that point p0 is the initial condition from where the circle starts generating the cycloid on the directing line that is a straight line so let's start step one would be to draw the circle of diameter d and there, uh, for drawing a circle we need a center so we take the center as c then what we will do is we will draw a tangent from p0 of distance equal to pi d here we go so i have taken the center c and then i have drawn a circle this circle has diameter d and then from point p0 that is there on the circle i have drawn a tangent of distance pi d or of length pi d why pi d because the initial point of rolling of this circle on this uh, line would start at p0 and then again when it p0 touches this line the distance it had covered would be the total of the circumference of this circle hence the distance is pi d so here at the end point again p0 will come in contact with this line here this is the directing so uh, sorry this is the rolling circle or generating circle and this line is known as the directing line so now we are going to uh, follow the next steps to construct our cycloid now we are going to divide the circle into 12 parts you must have observed and i keep on telling this again and again that this method of dividing a circle into 12 parts has to be masterized because in each and every curve right now we have discussed locus we have discussed engineering curves for all the drawings that we have done we have almost in all the drawings we have divided the curve or say the circle we have divided it into different parts and especially if it is a circle we divide it into either eight parts or 12 parts so p0 
please master this art and make it fast because if you don't uh, if you take a lot of time in dividing parts then it you might not be able to complete the paper as engineering graphics is a, a lengthy paper almost each and every time so let's move to the next part so i'm dividing the circle into 12 parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 and 12 so I have divided this circle into 12 parts. Now, uh, why I am going, why I am doing this is that for when th this circle would be rotating, uh, so when this circle would be moving on this line, say it, it is rotating like this and moving forward, then what will happen? F first one will come into contact, then two will come into contact, then three will come into contact, then four will come into contact and similarly 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 12, uh, 12 will be the point when P0 again comes in contact. So I have divided this circle into 12 parts to have different positions of the circle while it is rolling on this line. So what next do I have to do? Now I have divided the circle into 12 parts. So I have to divide the length of the line also in 12 parts because both the length uh, of the, the circumference of the circle and the length of the directing line is same the parts will also be the same so one will coincide with one two will coincide with two and three will coincide with three once we do it first we are going to draw parallel lines from the circle and then we are going to divide oh, I'm sorry uh, now we are going to divide the directing line into 12 parts we have drawn parallel lines uh, to the directing lines, directing line which is there uh, below and uh, from each and every point on the circle uh, which is the step uh, that we missed uh, uh, while I typed. So again I will go through it, what we did is first we uh, drew, drew a, uh, we took a center, we drew the circle of diameter D then we took a directing line of length pi D then next what we did was we divided the circle into 12 parts. Then next step was to draw lines which are parallel to this directing lines from each and every point on the circle. And then this step, in this step, I'll repeat the step again. What we did is we divided the directing line into 12 parts and then we erected the perpendiculars to intersect the center line at C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11 and C12. Now, students, instead of dividing the directing line into 12 parts, you can directly divide this center line into 12 parts. Now, why we have done this is that these points are more accurate than cutting an arc. That's why we have taken these perpendiculars instead of directly dividing the center line. Moreover, there won't be any types of construction which will be there in the, this line. So if we use this line for reference and we take perpendiculars, then I guess uh, the figure would be more clearer. That's why we have depicted this uh, situation in this figure. Moving on, the next step would be with radius equal to CP0. CP0 is the radius of the circle, of the rolling circle. Or say it is the half of the diameter that is given in the question. Uh, we can say it is D by 2. And then we will take the center as C1 and cut an arc on the horizontal line passing through 1. Just as we did in locus. Now what we are going to do is, listen again. This I have shown a point. This this is where the arc would come. Now. We are going to take the center, uh, the radius would be C to P0, this, uh, which is the radius of the rolling circle. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to take the center as C1 and cut an arc on line which is passing through 1, which is here. Now why have I done that? When my circle rolls and when point 1 comes into contact, point 2 come in, comes into contact and different points on the circle come in contact with this directing line, this uh, center of my circle would move in a straight line and it will be present at C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6 at, at different times. And the point of taking the radius is that this point P0 will always remain at a, uh, a distance is equal to CP0 uh, at all times. Hence what happens is that if I cut an arc from C1 to P1 as I did here then I have the position of the first position of uh, 
my point 1 when the circle is rotating hence I have done this then again I will repeat the procedure with what I will repeat the procedure with uh, C2S center and mark cut an arc at P2 then next what I will do is I will take C3S center cut an arc at uh, say P3 which is shown here then next what I will do is I will take the center as C4 cut an arc here at P4 then next P5 C5 would be center same radius P5 then C6 would be center and this would be here we have completed say half of the rotation so this would be a straight line C, C, uh, C6 to P6 would be a straight line which will be equal to the radius of the circle as you can see then next what would come is uh, we will have center as C7 and cut an arc at P7 and then take this point then C, P8 then P9 then P10 then P11 and then finally P12 so again what we have is all these red dots points show us the different positions of the curve uh, say of different uh, points while the circle is uh, rolling on the directing line so once we join P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 up till P12 then we will have a curve let's see we will join all the points and we will have a curve this curve is a cycloid that is required by us so we have the cycloid not now what we are going to do is now we have to uh, draw the normal and the tangent to this curve from any point on this curve so first of all what we will do is we will take a point on this curve Q as you can see here I have taken a point Q on this curve I have removed all the points that I have marked and I have taken a point Q on the curve now for this curve uh, for this point on the curve I need to draw a normal and I need to draw the tangent now uh, we can visualize what is the tangent the tangent uh, intersects the, uh, this curve at only one part or touches the uh, curve that which is uh, cycloid in this case at only one part so a straight line passing through this point Q would be what would be its tangent but what is the procedure what is the right procedure of drawing this tangent on the curve uh, let's see the first after taking a point on the curve the next thing is we are going to do is we are going to take the radius as CP CP0 again which is the radius of the circle and from QS center 